here's the problem. I have this webcam. It's the Logitech Brio. I was experimenting with clipping these a cell phone attachment lenses on it and ended up messing up the glass cover. Maybe it was plastic. Basically, it left a smudge that would show up on the recorded video. So I decided that the only option I had left was just to break off the covering. Now, this solved the problem, but created a new problem in that it left everything exposed. The camera still works great, but I'm reluctant to just throw it in my bag because I don't want to end up scratching the lens. So what ends up happening is that I end up leaving this at home in my drawer where it's nice and safe and I simply use the crappy built-in webcam on my Dell laptop, the XPS 15. Great laptop but crappy camera and it's positioned at the bottom of the screen for a super flattering angle up my nose whenever I need to video conference. Now the whole reason I bought this webcam in the first place was so I wouldn't have to use the crappy built-in webcam on my laptop. And I bought it to use it, not to keep it safe. Okay, and this is where 3D printing came to the rescue. I simply designed a protective covering that fits right over the webcam. Here's the part and it just slides right into place. Uh, nice friction fit and it keeps it very safe and secure. So I can just not throw this in my bag with peace of mind that it's not going to get scratched. Now, this may seem like a simple example, but this is a $160 webcam that I wasn't using and now started using again because I was able to design and 3D print a part that cost me 17 cents to make. And I was able to design it so that it fits perfectly around the camera, which resulted in a very elegant solution rather than something that I was just able to rig together. Now again, it may seem silly to get excited about something so small, but this kind of stuff makes me happy. 20 minutes to print this part and less than 10 minutes to design it. I had a problem, I thought of a solution, I designed the solution, and 20 minutes later, I'm holding that exact solution in my hand. That's just beautiful and never gets old. Now, I'm gonna take a bit of a different approach with this design. Although it would be quite simple to just go right ahead and model this part, I'm going to first model the camera and then I'm going to use the camera to model the cap uh, by cutting away the exact shape that I need. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now I'm going to go fairly quick through this video. So if you're new to 3D modeling or new to Fusion 360, then you'll want to check out my new online course, 3D Design Academy with Fusion 360. Inside that course, I go much slower explaining each and every mouse click that I make. I'm actually opening up the course for enrollment and it will only be open for the next few days as I have a limit on how many students I'll be taking. Now, this is different than any of my other previous courses because in addition to all the beautiful models we'll be creating, I'll be offering live online help. Just like a real college course, it will come with office hours where you can show up and ask specific questions on issues you may have on completing the lessons. These will be live video group sessions where you will be able to show your screen and say, this is the problem I'm having or this is where I'm getting stuck. I'll put a link below to the course page with all the information and everything that's included with the course so you can check it out. Again, the course is only going to be open for enrollment for the next few days because we're going to go through the material as a class. So I want to make sure we all start at the same time and new material will be released each week for four weeks. Since this is the first launch of this course, I decided to keep it small. I'm only announcing it to you, my YouTube community, and maybe I'll send a few emails out to get a small group enrolled. This gives me a chance to ease into it and works well for you too, as I'll be able to provide more individual attention. Another big benefit of getting in on this initial release is that I'll be offering the course for less than half off of what it will be when I do the full launch. And once you're enrolled, you'll have lifetime access to all the lessons, even when I update the course. Okay, click on the link below if you want to find out more. All right, now on to this week's design. We'll begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane and then I'm going to grab my slot tool and I'm going to go with the overall slot here. Now I've already taken dimensions of my camera, used a pair of digital calipers to get the exact dimensions of length, width, and depth. So I have those ready to go and I'm just going to enter them right in as I uh, design this. So we'll go with the length here of that slot and that's going to be 101.8 and I'll hit enter and now I can drag out to select my width and I'm going to enter that as 26.8. I'll hit enter again 
and with the slots well you can see that the um, diameter here is listed but the width here is not although it's the exact dimension that I need it but it just doesn't show it I'll just hit D on my keyboard select that line and place it and you can see it's right there I don't have to re-enter it 101.8 okay now I want to align this to the center of my origin so I'm gonna grab my midpoint constraint there grab this line here and select that origin and it's going to go ahead and place it right there now I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'm gonna go with a center rectangle create a center rectangle here with the dimensions of 10 by 36.5 hit enter and I want this line to be constrained to the midpoint of this line here so again I'll grab that midpoint constraint select that top line of that rectangle and the bottom line of my slot and there it goes now this is the overall shape of the webcam so it's nothing fancy it basically looks just like this and now I just have to extrude it to give it uh, or to turn it into an actual 3d shape so I'll hit E on my keyboard for extrude select both profiles and I can take this arrow I'm gonna drag it down to give it a negative extrusion and I'm gonna go with a negative 26.5 because that's what I measured and hit enter the reason I went down is sometimes I find it useful just to have my sketch on top um, so that's the only other reason otherwise I could have extruded it up all right now I'm gonna create a sketch on the profile here and the only thing I'm gonna do here is just offset this outline here so I'm gonna to go to modify down to offset select this profile here and I'm gonna give it an offset of 1.3 millimeters hit enter and then I can finish my sketch E for extrude again I'm gonna select these two profiles that offset that I made plus that inner profile and I'm gonna extrude this down now instead of a cut I want a new body here and for distance I'm gonna go with the negative 12 millimeters and hit enter all right I'm gonna hit a on my keyboard to bring up the appearances uh, because right now I have two different bodies so if I actually go here into my uh, browser I can see I've got body one and body two here so I want to be able to easily distinguish between them so let's make the camera blue and then I'll drag the green here and to what's going to be the cover okay now that we can see them a little better let's go ahead and I'll untoggle this so you see with the offset that we created was for uh, the cover for making the design of the cover and here's the original camera now the way this is going to work is that the cover it's basically gonna look like this where it's gonna slide on top of the camera uh, but you see a problem here this weird artifact here where it keeps changing colors there that's because they're both occupying the same space right now and that's not what I want so the top surface of the cover here is on uh, the same plane as the the top of the camera now what I want to do is take the body of the camera and cut away from the cover here that way it'll leave me with the exact space that I need that I can just go ahead and print the cover and then slide it over the camera and it should fit perfectly there's a few steps we're gonna need to take before we can create that cut operation so one of the issues is that they are both covering that same uh, plane here so if I cut this it'll cut away this top surface here which I don't want so I'm gonna right click and go to move copy and I'm gonna select this uh, camera body here take that arrow and I just want to bring it down one millimeter so you see it says negative one that way it leaves a little space here between the camera and the cover and then I'll click OK now if I rotate you can see I'm not getting that weird artifact anymore okay now all I have to do is go to modify and then down to combine it's a little weird because really what I want to do is a cut here but combine brings up what is known as your boolean operation so once I select it, I have the option to actually cut join or intersect so I'm gonna go with a cut and my target body that's the body I want to perform the operation on that's gonna be the cover body here and the tool body is going to be the actual camera that's going to be my tool I'm gonna to make sure I have keep tools selected so it doesn't delete the tool body and then I'll click OK now it doesn't look like anything happened but if I just untoggle the visibility here of the camera and I rotate this you see now I have a hollow part right here so it took away the anything that overlapped the camera body and it left me with just this shell 
of the cover. Okay, just a few more things we're gonna need to do. I actually don't need this whole section over here, that square that came out. So I'm gonna take that off. And I just wanna be left with just this little cover that I can just like slide on top. So an easy way to do that is to perform a split body. So I'm gonna go to modify and then down to split body. Now I get this box here that tells me what's my body to split. Well, it's gonna be this cover body. What's my splitting tool? Now there's a bunch of things I can select as my splitting tool. I'm gonna to choose this plane right here. You can see it highlights. Once I select it, you see that it throws this sort of uh, uh, circle here showing me exactly how it's gonna cut it. And I'm gonna click OK. And again, doesn't look like anything happened, but I do see there's a line here that splits this body. And I can see that instead of two bodies, I now have three. And I can untoggle bottle body three here. And you can see it untoggles the visibility of that body. And I don't need this anymore, so I'm gonna right click and just go to remove. And that leaves me with this part here. Now if I toggle the original body, the camera back into view, I can see exactly how that it's gonna fit on top. Okay, in order to make this so that it fits perfectly, there's one more thing I'm going to need to do, and that will be to offset these walls a little bit, to bring them uh, inwards so that I have uh, a little bit of a gap between the cover and the camera. Uh, when I did the cut, it's an exact cut, and so the parts won't fit together because it's it's uh, too precise. I need a little uh, tolerance in there so that the part can slide in and out. Uh, the easy way to do that is to go to modify and grab your press pull command there. And I'm gonna select these inside walls here and I'll select each of these faces and I'm gonna go with a negative 0.1 millimeters. Now because it's so small, it'll be kind of tough to actually see what's gonna happen. but uh, once I enter it in, just keep your eye closely here on the walls and you'll see it'll, whoops, okay, so here's, I did one instead of 0.1, but you see what happened there, um, they moved um, outwards, which I want them to move the opposite direction, so um, I guess this is a good thing, Let me, just to show you what'll happen, if I did a negative one, you see how it thins it out, and it offsets them in, in, in that direction, but I don't want negative one, I actually want just a negative uh, 0 0.1 so do a negative 0 0.1 and it'll be just a slight uh, offset there just enough that it'll allow the part to slide in and out okay so now that I have that I can bring that body in view and you can actually if I zoom in you can see a little gap in there and, and that's um, that's actually what I want so that looks good the other part I want to make sure that this edge here doesn't interfere um, with the uh, camera so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that in a bit and this I have more leeway here I'm just gonna select it and do a, like a whole negative one millimeter and bring that inwards and this one I'll do the same thing negative one Oops, E for extrude, negative one, and I'm gonna bring that in as well. Okay, so that looks good. And then finally, I'm just gonna do a fillet on these edges here, so F for fillet. I'm gonna select these four edges, one, two, three, four, uh, 0 0.5 millimeter just to round those out, and there's my cover. Okay, so I could have gone in and just created this model, but uh, I find that this approach can actually be very beneficial because sometimes if you go straight in and make the end product, it's easy to make mistakes because you don't realize, oh, I should have considered, for example, this part here and I didn't, and now the model doesn't fit, and then you have to um, reprint it again, you know, design and reprint. Uh, I find this way where you actually create the part and then use the part to create the model that you need um, is just, it's a better approach, and, and it may seem like it's gonna take longer, but it actually always ends up being faster because you save yourself the trouble of making a lot of mistakes that you normally would make if you go straight uh, into modeling the part that you need instead of the part that it needs to be modeled around. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So um, keep this technique in mind because it's a very powerful technique. Just create your parts and then use your Boolean operations by going to modify, combine, and it'll really come in handy uh, when you need to create, uh, especially a part that needs to interact with another part.
All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, if you learned something, give it a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. As always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'm Vladimir with Desktop Makes, encouraging you to just make it.